And, um, you know, my career, I've been lucky. I've done everything from documentaries to feature films to podcasts. Um, but I've always had a fascination for a few things. One is the criminal justice system. Secondarily is just cops and robbers, right? Everyone, everyone is fascinated with cops and robbers. And I think throughout my career, I've always tried to tell those stories from different perspectives and different angles, um, specifically with, you know, the stuff we're speaking about, you know, tonight. I think what I've always tried to do is um, back up the information that I have with documents, right? Um, and, and being able to source those documents. I, I think what's happened in our world today is, you know, and, and uh, you know, I'll use a few examples, but I think there's so much misinformation that exists that the truth of what happened si kind of gets hidden. Right. Right. And it happens with a lot of, with a lot of stories. Um, you know, I just did a, a documentary that came out on Showtime called the Supreme team. And, you know, I worked, um, with, uh, Gerald Prince Miller, um, and, and wanted to tell his story. And, and I saw that in that story too, this mythology that is, that is sort of, um, was this the one that Nas was a part of? It was yes. Nas okay. directed it. I was one of the executive producers. Um, and I had through a, a, a dear friend of mine named Jay Griffin, um, had been put in contact with Prince and had been speaking to Prince on and off for about five years when he's, you know, in federal jail mm -hmm. and mass appeal, um, came to the table. Nas came to the table. We were able to get Prince and, you know, Supreme to sort of do the project, um, together, which, which, which was important. Um, and so, with any of these stories, for me, I think the fascination has always come down, you know, um, with crime. And then secondarily to that, how crime has defined America, right, um, over the course of, of many years. Let, let me ask you about the Supreme Team, Doc, real quick. Yes, sir. Do you feel like it was... For lack of better words, uh, <laughs> PG opposed to rated R. Well, you know, you bring up a, an, an amazing point, sir. Um, and I think um, in venturing to do those types of stories, there is a lot of politics that goes into it. Um, there, There's a lot of um, behind the scenes um uh, control of information. And, and I, I will say this, um, without going into too many people's business, but when you have a project like that, you can imagine with someone like Preem, someone like Prince, some of the people that were in their orbit, some of the people that were, you know, affiliated with them, there was a lot of moving parts to that project. Um, I think your assessment of it is is probably correct. Um, what has happened in TV these days, and this I'm not making excuses for you know the the PG reference, but places like Showtime and these bigger networks, right? They want you to create these documentary films, but they don't want to give you enough time to really, really spend the time to tell the story properly, you know? So these production schedules, um, you know, if you think about documentaries, what makes a, a great documentary is the ability to spend time to research and follow that story over the course of five years, you know, 10 years, making a murderer, right? It took 12 years to make that documentary. Showtimes, the Netflix of the world now, they want that type of content, but they want to tell you, guess what? You only have three months to do it, right? 
So yeah, that's, that's nice. that's nice. certain, yeah. certain things are sacrificed creatively and certain decisions have to be made. Mm -hmm. And I will say this secondarily to this, you'll find this interesting is there's a difference between investigative journalists and television producers mm -hmm. and uh, modern day television making. There is investigative journalism but it's seeming to be um, less and less because of the time frames of these things in order to tell the story, you know? So, I mean, listen, I, I could go on. It's probably another podcast that we could talk about the Supreme team um, yeah. and, and, and what went into it. So um, I'll leave that at that. Yeah. I wasn't going to ask you no more than that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Trust me. I got it. I just, you know, but you know, you know the one thing about it that everybody always says Bimmy wasn't in it. But I'm yeah. pretty much sure that's because that was a supreme decision, correct? Well, I will say, um, recently it came out um that that Bimmy um possibly could have spoken to the police. Um that you know, I, I'm not saying anything that everyone doesn't already know that came out publicly recently. Right. Um, I will say um, I don't I don't want to say it was a supreme decision. Um, I, I think there was some other things that went into it. That's a bit deeper than that. And I'll leave it at that. OK, cool. All right. I got it. I got it. All right. Only reason I thought supreme was because Bimmy started being around 50 cent. And I would assume that if Prem see Bimmy over there with 50, he definitely ain't rocking with him. You know what I'm saying? So that's that, that was, you cleared up with. There, there was a part of it and there's a part of Prince's case that is speculated um, uh, that ties and connects back to Bimmy. Let's put it that way. Okay. And that was something that never, um, that I will say, and I will not speak for anyone else, but there was a connection that was spoken about behind the scenes in very intricate detail. And I think you have to be careful about those things, right? Um, for many reasons. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was something that I always deferred to Prince and Prem around that type of stuff, right? Um, right. and, and, and that, that stuff and, and, and dealing with that stuff is very serious. Um, and it had a profound effect on many lives, right? Living and, and, and deceased. Um, so there's a seriousness to that stuff that you have to be careful about. Right. Okay. Well, we're going to get off of that then. <laughs> You're gonna leave that you're gonna leave that in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs>